Energy impact testing is required to ensure that Chrysler-built energy-absorbing bumper systems meet government specification requirements. This bumper system, used front and rear, is designed to withstand straight-on impacts at speeds up to 5 miles per hour and corner impacts at 3 miles per hour without impairing hood and deck lid locks, lights, or other safety-related systems on the car. Basically, the impact energy-absorbing system spaces the bumper away from the body and is attached by two energy-absorbing hydraulic units to the frame or underbody structure. When the bumper is hit by another vehicle or the car travels head-on into a barrier, the bumper assembly moves inward to dampen the impact force. Then, as the impact force is removed, the bumper automatically returns to its original position. Clearance is provided in the body for this bumper movement. Clearance gaps between the bumper and body are filled with flexible panels and strips to give a smooth, continuous appearance. The basic front bumper system consists of a bumper bar and hydraulic energy absorbing units at each side. Some models have a full width bumper reinforcement. The rear bumper system is similar to the front with a bumper bar and hydraulic units at the sides. Front bumper hydraulic units of some models are interchangeable side to side. Others cannot be interchanged because of mounting differences. Rear bumper hydraulic unit mountings make them different from front units, but they are interchangeable side to side on the same model. Hydraulic units are of the same basic design for all car lines. However, the stroke of the unit is matched to vehicle weight and relates directly to the amount of input energy involved. Compact and intermediate model front units have a two and a half inch stroke. Rear unit stroke is two and three quarters. Full size model units have a two and three quarter inch stroke front and rear. The hydraulic impact energy absorber operates on the same principle as a conventional shock absorber. It consists of outer and inner telescoping cylinders which contain a hydraulic absorbing assembly. The outer cylinder acts as a guide housing for the inner cylinder. It attaches to the frame or underbody structure to which it transmits load forces from the inner cylinder and bumper structure. The inner cylinder attaches to the bumper bar assembly and telescopes inward when bumper loads are applied. Side to side loads and up and down loads are transmitted by the cylinders directly to the frame or underbody structure. The cylinders enclose and protect the hydraulic unit from stones and other road damage. They are fitted with a flexible boot or a molded seal to resist entry of water, grit, and other contaminants. The hydraulic unit is built into the inner cylinder and consists of the cylinder, piston and rod assembly, rod seal, and a return spring. When bumper impact loads reach a required force level, a valve disc on the piston opens, allowing hydraulic fluid to be forced through a set of orifices into a fluid holding area produced by the inward movement of the inner cylinder. As the cylinder telescopes inward, the cylinder ends bottom before the piston reaches full travel, protecting it from overrun damage. Once the impact force is removed, the return spring returns the hydraulic unit and bumper to the original position. As previously mentioned, clearance is provided in the body for bumper movement. If body or grill parts are not properly aligned after repair or replacement, bumper interference can result. Here are examples of interference which will cause damage. Misaligned body parts or excessive horizontal bumper tilt can cause the bumper to hit a fender or the grill or to damage a quarter panel or deck lid. Excessive offset to either side distorts the fillers and may allow the bumper to contact the fender or quarter panel as it moves inward. An up-tilted front bumper can strike the grill, especially where the grill alignment is low. Up-tilted rear bumpers can hit the deck lid or quarter panels. A down-tilted bumper will leave a large gap and can cause fender interference at the top of the wraparounds or quarter panel interference at the rear. Bumpers can be moved up or down, in or out, and sideways for proper alignment. For vertical adjustment, the hydraulic unit center brackets on all models are slotted. In and out adjustment slots are provided on the end brackets of front bumper units for intermediate and full-size models. 
On compact models, the bumper can be moved outward by shimming between the bumper and the bumper mounting brackets of the hydraulic units. The bumper mounting brackets of all hydraulic units are slotted for side-to-side -side bumper adjustment. Side-to-side -side bumper adjustment is the easiest to make. Simply loosen the attaching nuts enough to allow bumper movement, center the bumper bar, and then torque the nuts to specifications. On intermediate and full-size model front bumpers, vertical, as well as in and out adjustment can be made at the same time. First, loosen the attaching nuts and bolts so the assembly can be moved. Now, before you align the bumper, be sure to install new anti-slip plates under the end brackets of both hydraulic units for mounting security. You see, the anti-slip projections on the plate faces flatten slightly when the bracket bolts are torqued in assembly and do not grip as effectively a second time. Get someone to help you align the bumper or support the bumper assembly at each side so you can position it more easily. When the bumper is centered and aligns horizontally and vertically, Make sure its fore and aft position is correct before you snug up the attaching bolts and nuts to hold it in position. The main objective is to average things out so there is adequate clearance without offensive misalignment of fenders, grill, or bumper. After you make sure the clearance is okay and filler panels fit smoothly, torque the attaching bolts and nuts to specifications so the adjustments will be secure. Rear bumpers on all models can also be moved up, down, and sideways when attaching nuts and bolts are loosened. Shims are used for in and out adjustment. The bumper must have adequate clearance and should align with contour features in the deck lid and quarter panels before the attaching nuts and bolts are tightened. Bumper heights must be correct to comply with government regulations. This requirement is especially important after repair or servicing where body parts and bumpers are removed. Normally, front and rear bumper heights are determined by vehicle design and should be within specification limits if front suspension height is correct and bumper alignment and bumper clearance are okay. Before checking front or rear bumper height, first make sure the front suspension height is correct. When these measurements are taken, the car must be on a level surface, tires correctly inflated to recommended pressure all around, no passenger or luggage compartment loads, and a full fuel tank. Bumper height dimensions given in the service manual are for standard vehicles at curb weight on a level surface with other basic requirements the same as for checking front suspension height. Frame mounted trailer hitches must not interfere with free movement of the rear bumper. The ball assembly should be removed when not towing a trailer. If the ball assembly is struck in a rear end collision, vehicle damage will be greater because the impact load is concentrated at that point. As a final note in our bumper story, be sure to check headlight aiming if you have altered front suspension height. Good bumper system operation and good car appearance go hand in hand. Proper alignment, of course, is a must. Make a practice of checking for proper clearance. You may be able to prevent unnecessary damage.